Hello, Uriel. Hi, Hero. Welcome to your session. This has been one session I've been really looking forward to. Mm, um, okay. First of all, it's good to see you after quite a while. Mm -hmm. you, know? you look much younger. What's your secret? Eating right, working out, and just trying to maintain peace of mind, I guess. Mm. Which is very hard, but yeah, we try. Mm. We do try. Okay, I know you've been through tons of media rounds and, you mm -hmm. know, they keep asking you the same question. Um, and I'm sure top of that list is how do you, how do you feel? How do you really, really, really feel? I feel amazing. No, I'm joking. I don't feel amazing. Um, it's bittersweet, like I, I, I've always said. I feel like um, it, it wasn't my time to go. And I felt like I had so much more to give. Um, it hurts. It really does hurt. Um, like even like when I watch TV and I hear set certain songs that remind me of certain housemates or you know the Saturday party or the pool party, it hurts. But I'm out now, and it wasn't in my control it was never in my control um i'm just trying to you know go through the emotions and there are a lot of emotions aggression sadness anger just so many different things going through my head um so i'm just trying to make it work in my head but my head currently is a place of it's like a whirlwind it keeps going around like i have so many things going, going around and also, I have to think about what I need to do in terms of my businesses. So it's hard to process everything. It's, I'm struggling, but um, I'm a strong woman. I've gone through a lot in life. I've faced a lot of challenges in life, my personal life. So I think I will handle it, but it is hard. I will not lie. Okay, you real. Hmm. It is hard. Mm -hmm. I think you've had a very you know, a great way of masking the pain. Mm -hmm. You said you've been through a lot of challenges in life. Mm -hmm. um, I've known you for quite a while now, and mm -hmm. I think I know some of those challenges, but what would you say has been the, the lowest moment of your life up until um, Big Brother, like the second, the All-Star season? Um, for me, like, I am very good at masking. Um, pain, hurt. I think it's something that I've learned to do over the years. Um, obviously being um, in this sector, in this, um, in the media, you know, one minute I can be having a massive tantrum and the next minute I just switch off and get to work. I've learned to do that. Mm. And I've learned to hide and mask, mask my emotions. So masking my emotions is almost second nature. Yeah. So I could be on set, I could be laughing with you, but I'm literally dying inside. And that is something I've learned to do over the years. Um, which takes me to my low points. I've had quite a few low points in my life. Um, I would say my number one low point um, would have been when, you know, way before I decided to, to you know, to embark on the health journey. Um, I had health challenges and one of them was I um, obviously was a little bit bigger and I had, you know, I was burdened with a lot of cysts in my ovaries. I didn't see my period for, I didn't see my period for, it was almost like four years. Four years and I, I didn't see my period. And I remember going to a doctor in the UK and they told me that, you know, there was a high possibility that I would never be able to have children. And I think about that time, my, my niece, oh, it was more than that. Yeah, my niece was just born or she was like two years old. And I remember leaving the office thinking, oh, I would never be able to have a child, you know? And for me, like I went into a state of depression. I was so depressed and to the point where like I, couldn't watch TV. I couldn't see kids on TV. I would hate going past schools or parks because I would be reminded 
constantly that I would not be able to be a mother. So it reached a point where, you know, I had to just say, okay, if I can't be a mother, I would have my niece as mine. And I think that's how, and that's why t till today we're very close because um, she looks at me as a second mother. My next, I would say, um, would be obviously my mom when, um, you know, we realized that she had the stroke and from there it developed to dementia, which is an ongoing illness. Um, and eventually she would pass due to the complications of um, dementia and other things she has. So for me it was coming to terms that, okay, now I can be a mother, I'm healthy now, but I would not have my mom around to do the omugo. I wouldn't have her around to be there for me. I don't even know if she's gonna be around to um, see me get married. Um, which was a hard pill to swallow and even if i got married and she was around would she even remember would she even know what's going on because obviously dementia causes you to have um you know let's say in layman's term you have you know it's sort of like brain damage you know everything is del you're, you're delusional you can't um you you don't know the difference between uh, reality and your delusion your delusional state and other health complications come into it. So would she be able to know that her daughter is getting married? You know, my mother was a very, is, well, was a very strong woman, powerful prayer warrior, very agile. And in seeing her bedridden for two years, not being able to walk, you know, wearing nappies, um, my brothers and I having to change her nappies, you know, hearing her scream in the middle of the night because she's seen things and it's hard you know it's hard but you just keep it moving and um yeah you keep it moving and i think my faith my faith in god um has had a lot to do with me being strong and always looking and wishing for the light at the end of the tunnel yeah. so yeah yeah uh, it's a lot it is a lot so you know leaving big brother um all stars was hard for me is hard for me but in all honesty i have gone through so much in my life and i have to tap into the energy i had when i passed through those experiences in order to allow me to persevere through what I'm going through now. And that is what I'm trying to key into. Um, having my mother around and seeing her, but not having her around yeah. is hard because she is my mother, but really that is not my mother. And that's not how she's supposed to be. Yeah. So yeah, I tap into strength all the time. Okay, so um, first of all, I'd like mm -hmm. to say that I admire you deeply and this was even before you stepped your foot into this place. You know, yeah. I told you before we started rolling the cameras that mm -hmm. I do admire the bond between you and your mother. Yeah, you did. And you might think it's normal and you mm -hmm. might think it's what is expected of a child to take care of, you know, his or her parents when mm -hmm. they're aged or when they're going through stuff as a result of, you know, age. But we live in a world where that is really not the case. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of old people that have kids that have just abandoned them just mm -hmm. because they can't sort of bear the burden of the crisis that they're going through. Yeah. Um, so um, your mother is very proud of you mm -hmm. that I'm very sure of. That's if um, she remembers that one. She didn't remember people one day, the other day, you know, they remember anything, <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure yeah. she is. The, the most important thing is to enjoy all the moments. Mm -hmm. um, your mother is still in, in her somewhere. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somewhere. You know, um, so you did mention that uh, one of the things that sort of worries you that's after that, first of all, it's this is just a whole lot to digest. You you didn't see your period for four years. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, you know, the doctors actually diagnosed that, you know, mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. ovarian cyst or something. Yeah. And eventually you took care of it. Mm -hmm. And now you're back to um mm -hmm. being normal because i was about to ask you what really inspired your weight loss but i'm glad that you're able to really share that with us mm -hmm. um if if i'm correct that's also one of the reasons why you had one to share the reasons, weight. yeah and obviously you know my 
uh, I, I come from a family where, you know, my mom obviously having high blood pressure and various different things. So I really did not want to see myself go down the same route. Mm -hmm. So I had to make a change and, you know, change the way I, um, the way I ate. Mm -hmm. And I had to incorporate working out, you know, strengthen my heart, yeah. my lungs and so on. So it was something that I had to do to better my life. Yeah. Um, I understand how important this Oster season, you know, was to you. Mm -hmm. But I want to let you know that the reasons why you got into the house, um, the only thing I would say that you didn't come up with is just the money. But people, the short while you spent, um, people saw you were game for who you were. Not like you were a different person. You were just a, a way better version of the year we saw, you know, during your season. Um, from your social media engagement, you can tell that... Um, People or uh, people actually did gravitate towards you. Mm -hmm. um, many might many people might now question, you know, since you guys love her so much, why didn't you vote her? You know, first of all, you were never in the bottom three in the first week, you know, so we didn't see it coming. A lot of people did not see it coming. You know, there are certain people that you just assume that they are fine. Mm. So um, I would just say that perhaps your uh, your fans, you know, did not. They just assumed that ah, it's real. There are other people that would leave the house before her, so they didn't know how dangerous it was. Not to it was it was a shocker to everybody. Mm. Um, I feel like it wasn't necessarily only my fans. I think it also boiled down to the jury as well, mm -hmm. um, because I obviously um, didn't have the lowest vote. Yeah, um, I think everything compiled together had a, had a run to me leaving the all-stars house so i wouldn't solely base it on my my fans i think everything had a you know um had a part to play yeah and that is how the cookie crumbled and i'm here today mm. you know you did make a statement at some point that you know you voted Lacon and you know he he was one he was one of the people that sort of you know chose cheshe over you and um do you have a relationship with Lacon? No, but there's um, a story and it's a particular person who stands out in that story. Mm. And it's a name that I would never, never like to um, <laughs> to mention. And it's a story of Judas. Mm. And that story is a story that I will not get into. We all know. Um, actually, it's very unfair for me to say that. I apologize. Mm. But I will say this. I will say that... Um, with the Lacon thing, I mean, I'm, I don't know if it's him or if it's not him, but I mean, whoever you naturally gravi gravitate towards as um, part of the jury, that is who you gravitate towards. Yeah. Whether I campaigned for him or I did not campaign for him, mm. I did that because at that particular time he was in the house, I felt he was worthy of my votes, of my campaigning. Mm. So whatever anybody does after that you are your own person you're not you're not um you're not in debt to me mm. and i would never i would never do that to somebody so if you see somebody else worthy or somebody who can campaign for you or even if somebody who has bought you a house like car that is up to you whatever um whatever x's and dots you sign mm. you have done it and you stand by it yeah but i will say this nothing and no situation will ever control the narrative of my life. Mm. Um, I think coming from Seago Bay 2017 and being one of the most successful housemates from 2017 until um, now, that is something amazing. And that is something that I do not take for granted. And I feel like this situation I hate. Mm but it will not control who I am because I am far greater than this situation. Yeah. And I know myself and I know whether Lacon voted me, whether whoever voted me, mm. I will be, excess, be a success. I am already a success. Yes, you are. And that is it. Mm. Um, but I will allow him to, to, to live and digest whatever feelings he's going through or whatever he's passing through, but I will not give anybody any more mm. um, hype, yeah. Especially when they're trying to promote their music. It is not worth my time. Okay, Euro. Let's let's get back to let's get back to mm -hmm. our our story. Mm -hmm. 
So you also did mention that um, one of the things that you sort of, when you think about, you don't feel so good is the fact that um, eventually when you get married and have your kids, um, your mom might not be able to sort of enjoy and fully live in that experience. Mm -hmm. um, do you think there's a, do you think there's some sort of pressure to settle down? Is there, is there pressure coming from anywhere? to settle or is it just the personal hard desire of yours to just settle absolutely i think there's, there's there's always pressure you know there's always pressure um there's pressure from um society you know you have to remember i didn't grow up i didn't spend my whole life in nigeria and it's it's, it's a little bit more relaxed in the uk right so being in Nigeria and being a woman of a certain age, when you get when you go past the age of let's say 25, 26, whatever, there's a huge pressure from society to get married, regardless of your achievements, regardless of you know you being holding two degrees, or regardless of you having this stardom or whatever, there is pressure. But I've learned to block that out because I I mean they are they. And I am, and I am myself. I, mean, I had a situation. One of my mom's um, cousins or whatever sisters. I don't even know which one she is. But um, tried to introduce me to a guy, and I was thinking, oh, okay, you know, fine young man. And when I saw the guy, hey, she ne came na. Ah, I said, has it come to this? Is it this guy? This guy. My mom said, my mom's. She's like in her almost 70s right so this woman is trying to introduce me to her school friend are you okay okay your school friend kenny <laughs> so he was like yeah he, he's still very active if you're just lucky that you're my auntie <laughs> because the way i wanted to backhand the phone here eh, you're very lucky so i've had aunties trying to introduce me to her, their school friends like maybe 65 year olds which is nothing wrong with that um i've had like one of my aunties, I wanted to introduce me to a guy, and I was like, okay. The first thing I said when I saw his his picture was, "Oh, wait, Pepper, does he have Pepper, or is it that? Is he is he that? Does he is he looking for me? Like, let's get married so I can give him UK citizenship because you look at this guy, you got mad at this guy. He is like by force by fire, actually, but UK. He wants to enter UK. If you see him, the guy looks hungry. His eyes red, like <laughs> very red eyes. I said, Mba, this is not for me." Um, so it's so funny and there's pressure everywhere, but even at my age now, I'm in my thirties, I still believe that, you know, um, what will be, will be. And I believe that I'm going to, I know that I have my faults, you know, sometimes I can be stubborn. I can react. I overreact. And sometimes I do have a little bit of aggression, but overall, I believe I am, I have a good heart. And I believe that, you know, there is a man out there for me, somebody that will understand me, somebody that has a good heart, somebody that will love me for me. And I know that that time is at hand. And I am a very patient woman. I've waited this long. So why should I rush into anything that is not meant for me? He's coming. He's around the corner. And we're going to enjoy ourselves in the other room. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of enjoying yourself, you did enjoy yourself quite a lot I in did. the house. Um, yeah. Did you do you think some people got the wrong narrative about you know your your activities with the opposite sex in the house? No, not at all. I think I'm the kind of person I am either quiet or energetic, and I don't do too, I don't do too well with. I like to drink, like not like I like to drink, but I enjoy the feeling of drinking. I love it. I love the fact that it just makes me feel open, happy. I just love the buzz it gives me. So I don't think anybody looked at me as, oh, Urel was doing too much. No, maybe other housemates that like that particular person, but I think everything I did, it was intentional on my part and I wanted to do it. If I see something I like, I always go for it. I don't shy away from um, see, you know, being open-minded and telling a man, you know, opening up, opening up a conversation with a man I like or, you know, getting flirty. I have no reasons to hide what I like. Okay.
So how would you say your, your love life out of the house is? <laughs> My love life out of the house, I would say right now, um, not too good. I feel like I, I find it hard to trust guys. Um, not too good. I do get pro approached by a lot of guys, but um, I've come to a stage in life where I know what I want from a man. I know the qualities which will match my qualities. And, um, you know, the other day I had a friend that was saying to me, oh, I heard that you really like Neo. I heard that you really like Neo. Oh, he's not for you. You need to get, you're too classy for him. You're, he's, he's, he's too gra gra for you. This, that, and the other. And this is just, it could be about anybody, but they mentioned Neo. You know, you're too classy, you're a classy babe. And I just said to the person, you've known me for how many years, okay? Oh, I'm too classy, I'm too this. Those classy or, you know, gentlemen kind of guys that I've gone for over these years, where has it gotten me? Do you understand? So I'm the kind of woman, I don't rule out, like, in regards to Leo, I mean, I'm not looking at age and I'm not looking at his maybe boisterous, whatever i'm looking at him because i've spent time and i've spoken to him and i love his vision i love what he's all about as long as we have a mutual connection i don't think age or maybe sometimes he could be boisterous sometimes i could be stubborn it should not um matter at all do you understand like his age and maybe maybe he has a little bit of the worry kind of vibe mm. do you understand so sorry to interrupt you are you saying that you might just have genuine feelings on you no i'm not saying that or you're just <laughs> I am saying, I'm not saying I have genuine feelings for Neo Hero. Okay. I'm saying that if he got out of the house and we went out on the date or something and it worked, I would not hold back because of his age. I have no issues. I don't, I don't, I, if I wanted to date any guy, I would not care about what other people think. Mm. Oh, you're too mature for him. Fine, but... I've dated guys my age, where has it gotten me? I think in this life, we have to learn, especially women, and women that are a little bit more mature, we have to learn to be open-minded. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us women, the reason why we are at this age and we're not married is because one, we listen to too much of what our friends and family says. We don't follow our heart, we don't follow our minds, and we end up in a situation, you end up maybe 45, 46, no marriage, no kids. That is not the route I want to go through. That's, that is not the route I want to go through. Jenna San, I want to live life. I want to experience life. And however that experience of happiness comes, I will surely embrace it and open up my arms. Okay, now I have to go for Big Brother. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Okay, well, um, this is a safe space. Um, I try not to dwell on the characters that are in the house or cool. you know just so we can focus on you because mm -hmm. um, yeah anyways is there any other thing you'd like to talk about zero no like if you want to ask me anything I'm, I'm cool with it but i'm absolutely um i just want to say that i'm a woman that's always going to follow my heart and i know i'm different i've always been different all my life i've never been part of any popular clique or anything i've always stood by myself and that is who Urel is. From school, I've always been a loner and I've learned to cope and I've learned to develop myself being that girl that's always by herself and I've become strong. So for me, I just want to put it out there. I would never conform to anything. I would always be a free spirit, a free mind and I will always continue to give content online. Um, <laughs> crazy contents with my um you know my ebo there and um, my podcast is coming and there's so many wonderful things that Urel is about to embrace her podcast uh, my workout videos my restaurant about to pop and i have to keep reminding myself that you know what this is not the end of the journey this is the beginning jenison and Urel, you control your own narrative not anybody not the jewelry not nothing this is my life and i will control it and i will always be a success and that's on period and that's on period <laughs> that's it oh well you all um 
from a, from an outsider perspective. I mm. mean, you guys were in the house, we were out of the house. Mm. Um, I did enjoy your time in the house. Okay. A lot of people did enjoy your time. And like I said, the only thing you did not come out with is the 120 million, mm -hmm. which would have been nice. Mm -hmm. But every other thing that you were looking for, um, it's amazing how you were able to be one of the strongest players in the house. Um, 2017 is a long time. And like you said, you're one of those few people from that particular set that you've been consistent, um, you've been working hard. And I think you just had the most perfect eviction. That's actually the truth. Because mm -hmm. if you were the lowest, mm -hmm. if you had the lowest votes and you were evicted, people would think it's normal. People would say it's normal, rather, mm -hmm. because, you know, they would expect it. Um, but there has been a huge conversation around how you were evicted, which translated to giving you a lot more boards than you would have had if you were just normally quote and unquote evicted. So I would just really want you to see this not as a setback but as a blessing. Absolutely. Um trust me, it's it's literally everywhere. Um if you had left the house even at the ninth week, if you didn't or even at the grand finale, I don't think there will be such huge conversations around your leaving the house. And then you're leaving the house alone. There's a lot of spotlight on you now, you know, also considering the circumstances around your eviction. So all I'll just say is, you know, make good use of this. Um, you're somebody I know you've always, you've always turned lemons into lemonade, right? Mm. And don't do anything less, okay? 100. So you have new fans, you have people that are interested in your company. And I think you have a lot of sellable points, you know, from food to fitness. The, the markets, the, the, the monetization range is heavy. It's wide. You just need to have a good team and make sure that they put you on the right path and just try and do as many things as possible and as efficiently as possible. Mm. All right? Yeah. All the best, Euro. Thank you. And I just want to say thank you for having me. And yeah. I haven't said this enough. And I actually want to thank um, Multi Choice as well because, you know, I was shocked from the first initial um, phone call when they picked me. So I just want to say thank you to them for yeah. giving me this opportunity and for allowing me to come back onto the screens again. And um, yeah, I think there's more to come. So I want to say thank you to you for having me. It's an honor. And yeah. <laughs> Oh, stop it, I like it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Your session is over. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ural, the queen, of course, the vibe. And I just finished my session, my therapy session with Hero. And do you know what? I'm feeling very soothed okay i feel calm and collected and i want to say a huge thank you to all my followers my fans and of course multi-choice i have to drop that in there um, i want to say thank you for the love and if you want to know more about what i'm getting up to follow me on my instagram url music star and you can follow, also follow me on twitter url music star and tiktok url music star and i want to say i love you peace out